Hello, and welcome to Japanese Craft Beer Reviews. Uh, from today, we're going to begin a new series, uh, and we're going to look at uh, 11 different beers from the Kyoto Brewing Company. And these are fairly recent beers that they have uh, produced, and uh, I uh, visited their tap room not too long ago and picked up uh, these 11 bottles. And uh, Kyoto Brewing Company is uh, uh, located in, of course, Kyoto, which is one of the ancient capitals of Japan. Uh, they started in the year 2015. They've been going a little over five years now. And uh, they were founded by three people, uh, an American, a Canadian, and a Welshman. And uh, full disclosure, I know all three of them. Uh, and I uh, have known the uh, American who is the head brewer uh, for a number of years uh, when he was a home brewer, even before he started brewing. Um, he uh, used to bring us his home brew, uh, friends, beer drinking friends, and we would sample it and uh, uh, give him our impressions. And uh, he was an excellent home brewer. Um, he also uh, studied in the US and he did an internship at Lost Abbey down in Southern California. And then in Japan, he did an internship at one of the very best craft breweries uh, in this country, uh, which is uh, Shiga Kogan Beer. So uh, he got a lot of experience and they started in 2015 and they were named the best new brewery in Japan for that year uh, by Rate Beer um, in the Rate Beer Best Rankings. And uh, they were also, in 2019, uh, the last, last year, they were also voted the best brewery in Japan by Rate Beer Best. So uh, they have been around again for five years. They have a tap room, uh, which is now has limited access due to the coronavirus. Uh, you can uh, go in and buy beer and sit outside and drink, uh, but they haven't opened the uh, upstairs uh, seating area yet. Um, and they're open on week weekends, primarily Friday, uh, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, occasionally they open for, uh, on weekend, holiday weekends, they may open a little longer than that. Um, they are, have three main flagship beers, which you can buy on their website. And they also have two seasonal lines. Um, one is called the Kimagure line, and that's generally... Uh, uh, pale ales or IPAs, things like that. And their second seasonal line is Shunka Shuto, which is, they're generally Saisons. And these are f uh, four quarterly beers uh, following uh, the seasons. So Kimagure will uh, have a spring version, uh, a summer version, etc. And Shunka Shuto actually does mean uh, spring, summer, uh, autumn, and winter. So they come out, uh, so they have two seasonal lines, uh, four beers each in each one, so eight seasonal beers a year. But they put out a lot of one-offs too as well, uh, quite a few beers. Uh, on Rate Beer, in fact, they list 168 different beers, uh, and this is as of October. Uh, so in five years, they have made that many different beers. Uh, and on Untapped, uh, 137, so they haven't got quite all of them yet. Um, and the average ranking for their beers, rating for their beers is 3.71 on, on uh, untapped. So um, they have been quite successful uh, critically, and uh, right now they are, fortunately they got into bottling uh, and online sales before the coronavirus uh, really hit hard here. And so they've been able to keep things going with that and their tap room open as well. So let's look at 11 different beers from this uh, wonderful uh, brewery in Kyoto. Hello, and here we are again with uh, another beer from Kyoto Brewing Company. And let's uh, look at what it is here. This is the fourth one in a series of 11 that we're looking at. It's this one. It is called in uh, in Japanese, jiku o koete, and in, in English they've named it Blank Revival. 
uh, interesting kind of name and you'll see that it is a collaboration with Kyoto Brewing and a company called BET uh, and <clears throat> BET is a brewing equipment company based in Tokyo uh, brewing uh, and equipment uh, equipment and uh, ingredient company so I assume that Kyoto Brewing has done some business with them in the past uh, I'm not sure the nature of the collaboration uh, but certainly it was brewed at Kyoto Brewing uh, and this one is a it's a interesting style it's something new uh, for Kyoto Brewing and for many people including me uh, it's a, a Wies W-I-E-S not a Weiss uh, W-E-I-S-S -S, but W-I-E-S-S -S. and this is a style that was made in Kelm uh, popular in Kelm before Kelsch was really popular and uh, so apparently it was the most drunk beer there uh, in drunk beer in Kelm and it's uh, it was a kind of an unfiltered Kelsch style uh, before they really dealt to Kelsch beer and so Kilda Brewing is attempting to recreate this very old style hence the name blank and revival and so as they say here it's a traditional look at the label here w-i-e-s-s -S. and uh so they for this one they used 100 percent german ingredients um and a special white e white labs yeast which apparently was made just for this beer um so that must have taken some energy and time to get that done uh with white labs to get them to create a special yeast just for this beer um and in addition uh, they took the Kyoto water and uh, changed it around, you know, with, uh, I assume, with some kind of mineral, mineral additions to try to recreate the character of water in Kelm. So, very interesting experiment here. They're trying to really produce uh, or recreate an old style, hence revival. And this one is 5.5%, 22 international bitter units. The malt bill is, uh, consists of three kinds. Uh, it's uh, Erex Pilsner, Erex Wheat Light, and Erex Sour. And I don't know the Erex, uh, I-R-E-X, uh, e, I'm sorry, I-R-E-K-S. I'm not sure exactly what the, the uh, provenance of that is. The hops uh, for bittering are uh, Spalter, and for flavor and aroma, also Spalter. The yeast is something called White Labs German Ale 2, and as I mentioned before, it was apparently created just for this beer. Uh, this beer is a little bit more expensive than most of the Kyoto brewing beers. It was uh, $5 or five, uh, 580 yen, which is about hmm, close to maybe five, five dollars uh, or so, uh, maybe 550, something around there. Okay. Well, on rate beer, three ratings only, uh, 3.8 average, pretty high. On untapped, it has 40 ratings at 3.78, so almost about the same. Uh, should we give this one a go? Again, it's called Kyoto Brewing Blank Revival or Chiku o Koete. This is also uh, kind of unusual for Kyoto Brewing. They're much more known for making uh, Belgian-inspired uh, pale ales, IPAs, saisons, things like that, uh, than, than Kelsch style. But in our last video, of course, we saw they made a Kelsch style beer, and here they're making the precursor of the Kelsch style. So it is lightly hazy. You can see through it, but definitely there's some, some haziness going on there with like a half a finger or so of uh, thin white head, thin film of white head. Uh, carbonation, very minimal. Go through the light, see what we get. Okay. Yeah, I see any carbonation going through here. Very, very minimal. All right, aroma. Hmm. Okay, 
lightly fruity. Uh, hmm. Something like, like uh, you know, unsugared fresh fruit juice. Uh, something green, greeny kind of green fruit. Uh, grapes, uh, green apples. Hmm. Okay, it's a little bit bready, I think. With a nice fruit tang in the mid palate, it rises up and uh, kind of takes over. Uh, again, apples. Maybe light pear. Uh, you know, it's kind of some kind of green, light green fruit. Uh, very interesting. The yeast is kind of hanging there in the background. Bitterness is mild. It comes in as often does in mid palate and sort of stretches out slowly to the to the finish. Yeah, very nice, very interesting. Uh, body is kind of medium. Maybe thin to medium body. Very nice, uh, very refreshing. Uh, this would be like you can see. This would be kind of like a, uh, a workaday beer for uh, you know in pubs, uh, in taverns. You know where working men were throwing back beers. Hmm. Very nice. So once again, this is called Kyoto Brewing uh, Jiku o Koete, and in English, Blank Revival. It is a traditional Wisa beer. Uh, and they went to a lot of trouble to try to recreate this style. Very interesting, and uh, I, I applaud them for doing that. I always like it when breweries try to do something, you know, out of the box, uh, something that, you know, people haven't done before, or haven't done much before, and uh, Kyoto Brewing certainly did it with this beer. So uh, go check out Kyoto Brewing on their website. They're offering a lot of beers uh, for sale on their online store if you live in Japan. If you don't live in Japan, I hope when all of this coronavirus uh, is finally gone, you come to Japan and you can go to Kyoto and try this wonderful brewery. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.